Hi, this video is going to be interesting because uh, in this video I am going to explain how to average um, tall people might have children who is going to be much taller or much shorter or for example how it is possible for two dark skinned people to have children whose uh, skin color would be much lighter. So today's problem is height in humans depends on the additive action of genes. Assume that this trait is controlled by the folosi R, S, T and U and that environmental effects are negligible. Instead of additive versus non-additive alleles, assume that um, additive and partially additive alleles exist. Additive alleles contribute 2 units and partially additive alleles contribute 1 unit to height. Uh, question A. Can two individuals of moderate height produce offspring that are much taller or shorter than either parent? If so, how? So let's um, me, let me show you how this is possible. So we are given um, four uh, loci. This is loci R, S, T, and U. And we are, I mean, humans uh, deployed. So for each loci, we have two alleles. And now imagine that uh, we have a situation where both parents belong to one genotype. And the genotype would be capital R, small r, capital S, small s, capital T, small t, and capital U, and small u, genotype. And this is going to be genotype, for example, of the father and we cross it with uh, another genotype of the mother that is going to be uh, the same so heterozygous for all alleles for all uh, loci so capital T small t and capital U small u and uh, when we have four loci that control the height uh, we might get situation where uh, gametes that would be produced would have um, only, for example, capital uh, alleles. So um, only one of the alleles can be inherited. So uh, if we have, uh, for example, if this side would be father side, so uh, the sperm would be produced and only one of the uh, alleles may go into the uh, sperm because uh, sperm is haploid. So, for example, it can be capital R allele. So we may have here capital R. We may get capital S. We may get uh, capital T. And this might happen that we might get here uh, capital U allele. So this would be genotype of the sperm and uh, this is this side is going to be of the mother side and mother would produce X cell and X cell is much uh, bigger than sperm about uh, 100 folds bigger and uh, so the same situation might happen here also. So um, only capital alleles would end up to be in the Excel. So we may have here capital R, capital S, capital T and capital U. And when this two uh, sex cell join they would make uh, a new diploid organism and genotype going to be uh, capital R, capital R, capital S, capital S, capital T, capital T and capital U, capital U. 
and we are told that uh, capital R gives two units to the tallness and small r gives only one unit. So uh, if we count uh, the genotypes of the uh, father and mother, we are going to get uh, 3 here, plus 3, 6, plus 3, 9, plus 3, uh, 12. And the same uh, we are going to get for the mother, who is going to be also heterozygous at all loci, uh, but the children or this particular child would have uh, all the capital alleles and as you see uh, would be uh, 4 plus 4 8 plus 4 12 plus 4 16 so uh, average uh, for the, uh, say, uh, father would be 12, for the mother also would be 12, and for the child would be 18. 18, oh, sorry, 16 units for the tallness. So this particular child would be much taller than either of uh, parents. We even can count uh, chances, so what is the chance that uh, sperm would get a uh, capital R allele and this is obvious that the chances is one half so one half chances to get capital R allele and if we consider this loci with two alleles uh, what is the chances to get a capital S allele also would be one half and the same rule applies to the uh, capital T and capital U alleles. And now we just have to multiply all these independent uh, events. And what we are going to get here, uh, uh, one half multiplied by one half, one quarter, multiplied by one half, one eighth, and multiplied by one half would be one over 16. And uh, the same would be uh, true for the mother side. And now we just have to multiply these uh, possibilities. So uh, 1 sixteenth, we have to multiply with 1 sixteenth. So the chances for this particular couple to have a child with such genotype would be 1 over 256. So uh, this uh, explains how these two particular uh, parents may have a child who is going to be uh, much taller than any of them. And the same rule of course applies uh, to the variant where we can get only small uh, alleles uh, for our genotype of the uh, sperm and egg cell and thus for the um, child. So, uh, and of course we would have uh, many intermediate variants here. So, uh, this couple have equal chances to have a, a very tall child or very short child and uh, uh, many uh, variants that is going to be intermediate genotype. And uh, now we can move to the question B. If an individual with the minimum height specified by these genes marries an individual of intermediate or moderate height, will any of the children be uh, taller than the tall parent? Why or why not? Once again, we can solve this problem just writing down uh, genotypes and genotype uh, of the parent one this is uh, actually doesn't matter whether it is uh, female or male so let it be for example mother of the child who is going to be short and uh, her genotype would be small r small r 
small s, small s, small t, small t, and small u, small u. And if she marry a person who is going to be intermediate, so capital R, small r, capital S, small s, capital T, and small t, and capital U, small u. Um, as you see, um, father uh, would be able to give to the progeny with the dominant allele or recessive allele, dominant that gives uh, two units and uh, recessive allele that gives only one unit and mother only can give uh, alleles that is uh, can give only um, unit that gives only one to the tallness and that means that such couple would never be able to have uh, children who is going to be taller than uh, one of the tallest parents. Uh, all the children can be different variants where this parent would be tallest or the children can be as tall as this parent but never would be taller than this parent. Because even if this parent would donate all his uh, dominant alleles to the progeny, uh, there is only uh, recessive alleles that uh, mother of the uh, child can donate. So all the progeny would be intermediate between these two parents. And unlike in our example above, where children can be taller than the parents or shorter than the parents, here is a different situation. Uh, this is genotype uh, for the tallest child possible and this genotype for the shortest child possible. And uh, there can be a range of different intermediate genotypes and in intermediate uh, many variants of the tallness. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please uh, write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.